the commission this afternoon. Armstrong weighed in at 158 and three quarters, and Hank came in at 160 and one quarter. In the left-hand corner, we will have Armstrong, and in the right-hand corner, Henry Hank. In just a few minutes, a 10-round middleweight bout between Henry Hank and Gene Ace Armstrong will get underway. Have you tried the Nutrient Super Blue Plate? No. What's it like? Nothing like it. It shaves that are out of this world. Have you tried the new Gillette Super Blue Blade? Millions and millions have, and it's surprising if a friend hasn't told you about it. Because wherever you go, men are talking about the incredibly clean, easy shaves you get with the remarkable Super Blue. It's magic, sheer magic. Engineers call its edges a scientific breakthrough, a process that is Gillette's alone. You want proof? Here's a special trial offer. For only 89 cents, you get a dispenser of Super Blue Blades, a Super Speed Razor, and this modern travel case. There's a buy for you, but the supply is limited, so get yours soon. Made to fit any Gillette razor, Super Blue Blades are priced at 69 cents for a dispenser of 10, or $1 for the new 15 blade dispenser. The main event fighters are safely in the center of the ring, so let's go up to our friend, Johnny Addy. Johnny? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Here are the ring officials assigned by the New York State Athletic Commission. The judges, Frank Forbes and Nick Gambuli. The timekeeper is George Bannon. Counting for the knockdowns, Bonnie Smith. Your referee for the main event, Al Burrow. Ten rounds from Elizabeth, New Jersey, wearing black trunks, weighing 160 and a quarter, Jean Ace Armstrong. Armstrong. His opponent from Detroit, Michigan, wearing white trunks, weighing 158 and three quarters, Henry Hank. Hank. Main event, 10 rounds. Well, both you boys know the rules of the New York State Athletic Commission. I expect you to keep your blows up and low blow me penalize you around. I expect you to break clean and clinch it when I tell you to step back, step back yourselves. Three and a half downs in one round ends about right there. Shake hands now, good luck. In New York, the bout is scored on a rounds basis and an auxiliary point system is used in case an official's rounds come out even. Henry Hank in the white trunks, he's the belter, he's the boxer. The eight and three quarters. Hank weighs 160 and a quarter. A belated announcement by Johnny Addy on the weights, which we already gave you. Hank, 160 and a quarter. And Armstrong, who is a fine boxer, 158 and three quarters. Armstrong in the black trunks. Henry Hank in the white. Armstrong will feature a darting left hand. Hank will try to take him out with one punch if he can. Hank throws a bomb with either hand, but he needs punching room. So Armstrong is going to try to stay on top of him to smother his punches, like he just did. Very fine official in there, Al Burrow is the referee. Armstrong beating his man to the punch with both hands, but Hank whip whiplashes that right hand, and he's got a dangerous left hook. Two minutes to go in round one, scheduled for 10 at Madison Square Garden on Saturday night, which is date night here at the Garden. Armstrong has got to watch out for a sneak right hand.
said Hank relaxes between attacks. with Hank and that's what Hank wants. Well, we'll see how it turns out. He dropped him that time. Only seconds to go in round two. Let's follow Gene Ace Armstrong back to his corner. Gene is married and has three children. He was born in uh, Pickenville, Georgia in 1932. And uh, on the right-hand side is his manager, Bobby Gleason, in the center is his brother-in-law, believe it or not, Bill Robinson. On the outside is Jimmy Wilde, who will handle any cuts that may turn up. Armstrong's a fine boxer, but he's been held back by inactivity. In six years, he's had only 21 fights. He won 18 in a row, then he lost two to Dick Tiger and had a draw with Ernie Buford. Over in the other corner, we have the puncher, Henry Hank, and a familiar figure on the outside of the ring, Manny Seaman on the right-hand side who trained Joe Lewis when Joe was such a great champion. Manny Seaman back in ring action for the first time in a long time. Jim Bolin, the manager, is in the center, and on the uh, outside is Taylor Smith, the trainer of Henry Hank. Hank is the puncher, and Armstrong is the boxer as we come up for round three, the Bell Madison Square Garden. Hank in the white trunks, Armstrong in the black if you just joined us. It's been a good one so far. Here, 
Hank likes to fight in flurries. man's deodorant, new Gillette Right Guard. Two seconds give you 24-hour protection. Dries instantly on contact. Only new Right Guard, the power spray deodorant, can give you complete protection. So fast, so conveniently. Not this messy creams you have to rub in. Not this gummy roll-ons that waste time. Not this hit and miss sprays that drip. But this push button power spray ease and speed, cool and refreshing. And Right Guard dries on contact. It destroys odor-causing bacteria, checks perspiration, gets right through for complete coverage where odor begins. So remember, with new Right Guard deodorant for men. Two seconds, give you 24-hour protection. Get Right Guard today at a nearby store. Just 89 cents. Round four, Gene A. Armstrong, Elizabeth, New Jersey in the black trunks. Henry Hank of Detroit in the white trunks. And Armstrong, the boxer, has been hitting almost as hard as the slugger. And boxing better. But Hank is one of these fellows who can be losing right down to the last few seconds and knock out his man.
half over, round four. I don't have to describe this action. sports attractions presented by the American Broadcasting Company. Big League Baseball, Saturday Night Boxing, Sunday Football, Golf, and Bowling are incorporated to create an exciting and diversified ABC sports lineup. I'd like to take another look at uh, Henry Hank and uh, tell you a little more about him. He was born February 9, 1935 in Greenville, Mississippi. He's 25 years old. His real name is Joe Harrison, but he took the name uh, uh, Henry Hank, because he so admired Henry Armstrong, the great triple champion of about 20 years ago. He's a knockout puncher, but like many knockouters, can punch himself out early in a bout. He's landed some good ones, but at the moment is being outboxed. Now the warning whistle has sounded for round five. Both boys are ready to go. Armstrong up, and here comes his opponent, Henry Hank. Hank in the white trunks, Armstrong in the black. punishment that Armstrong has taken. Two minutes to go in this round. Slow down, unless he's playing 
playing possum. Maybe he was. How about that? Ten seconds to go in round five. disdains defense. Just tries to bob and weave away from punches. Heavyweights, Billy Hunter of Detroit, Michigan, and Mike DeJohn of Syracuse, New York. It's 10 rounds or less at Madison Square Garden. Hunter scored a spectacular knockout victory over rugged Ray Lopez last month. He has two wins over Alex Mitteff, one by knockout, and a decision over Tony Anthony. An unusually fast, skillful boxer, Hunter has won 16 out of 25, nine by knockouts. DeJohn is one of the hardest punches in boxing. Last fall, he disposed of Charlie Powell in 57 seconds. In July, he defeated top-ranked English heavyweight Dick Richardson in eight rounds. DeJohn has won 40 out of 48 fights, scoring 27 knockouts. The fight of the week next Saturday, heavyweights Billy Hunter and Mike DeJohn, brought to you by the Miles Products Division of Miles Laboratories and by the Gillette Safety Razor Company. Now there's the bell for round seven, Armstrong in the black trunks, and Hank in the way. Armstrong up to now has given a superb exhibition of boxing and pretty crisp hitting. Hank, Hank is going for grabbing Armstrong's glove and then hitting him. I guess it seemed the thing to do at the time. Two minutes to go in round 
seven. Armstrong has worked that left hand to perfection on pretty good rights. the new Gillette Super Blue Blade? That's a watchword when men get together. Men want to share the comfort, the clean, clean shaves they get with this almost unbelievably superior razor blade that's double-edged for economy. Why, you scarcely know you're shaving. Super Blue Blade edges are new, brand new, made by a process exclusive with Gillette. So try the new Super Blue. It fits any Gillette razor, 10 for 69 cents and 15 for $1. Or accept our special money-saving trial offer. A dispenser of Gillette Super Blue Blades, a Gillette Super Speed Razor, and new modern travel case. All this for only 89 cents. Hurry and get yours while they last. Well, we're coming up to round eight. It's been real interesting. Armstrong up, Hank up, and the bell. Armstrong in black trunks, Hank in white trunks. Armstrong, the master boxer, Hank the slugger.
less than a minute to go on this round. There have been no knockdowns in the fight. And seemingly, neither boy has been cut. Armstrong, you wonder why he hasn't fought more often. He ran up a winning streak of 18 in a row. 17 by decision. He hasn't been too much of a hitter. He's only got one knockout. And then uh, inactivity seemed to dull him. He lost two fights to Dick Tiger, a pretty good middleweight, and in the last time out he drew with Ernie Buford on September 21st. But he's in real good shape tonight. He's uh, in his second fight under the tutelage of Bobby Gleason on the outside. Bobby had Nino Valdez and years ago had the featherweight champion, Phil Terranova. And that's Bill Robinson, Armstrong's brother-in-law, making with the gestures, saying, think of my sister and the two girls and a boy who are home. And the other corner, Henry Hank, has six children. He's got five boys and a girl. Now it's round nine. No knockdown so far. Armstrong in black, Hank in white trunks. <laughs> that Armstrong is fighting. Bobbing, weaving, shifting, sidestepping, sliding. See him roll with those punches? Seconds to go in round nine.
Al Farrell has them touch gloves now. As, oh, he has to hold them apart until we get that bell. There it is. Second final round. Armstrong has fought a masterful fight. He tried, but he couldn't land the big one. Or if he did, Armstrong took it well. No knockdown scored in the fight. Nobody cut. The referee Al Burrow doing a nice job in there. Two minutes to go in this 10th and final round. playing it smart now. He probably figures he's got a pretty good lead. Wilson sticking his chin out at this late date. He's hit that time. One minute to go in the fight. Seconds remaining. I hear the crowd applauding. 15 seconds left. Well, that won't be a knockout. There's the final bell. A fine boxing contest. Dean Ace Armstrong showed that he's one of the finest boxers in the middleweight ranks as he stayed away from lethal punches by Henry Hank. We'll have the decision in just a minute. Hey, look, I found the early bird. He really is quite rare. Biggest moment. Well, the decision hasn't been announced yet. I thought that Armstrong fought the greatest fight of his career and uh, displayed remarkable boxing ability. Now let's have the decision. Referee Al Burrow scores at five, four, one even, Armstrong. Judge Frank Forbes has it six, three, one even, Armstrong. Judge Nick Gamboli, Eight, one, and one even, Armstrong. With a unanimous decision, Gene Armstrong. A unanimous decision that got wider as uh, each new uh, official was announced. Al Burrow, 5-4-1. That was uncomfortably close. Frank Forbes, 6-3-1. And then Nick Gamboli, 8-1-1. For a unanimous decision for Gene Ace Armstrong, who starts a new winning streak, the biggest victory of his career, as he outpoints and easily Henry Hank, the slugger.